Hi, David Vizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. Guys, I think we're watching the start of episode 63 of Paratech 10. But to be honest, I'm starting a video here with no idea what the subject's going to be. Terry's going to give me a call any moment, and I'm expecting to find out what's going on. Oh, there's Terry now. Let me just answer that. Hello, David. Yep. Yeah, this Terry. Is my, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, did you get my surprise boxes on Friday? Uh, yep, yep. I've got them here, and I'm about to open them. I'm guessing it's cylinder heads, right? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, uh, well, look, let me open them, right, so I can see what we've got here, and, uh, and I'll give you a call back. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's open this packet. Ah, well, at least I can see the cylinder head. It's a dark cylinder head. <laughs> Pretty trick looking cylinder head. It's a nine degree raised port dark cylinder head. And I bet I can tell exactly what Terry wants me to do with these. It looks like they are kind of roughed out. New seats in them. Doesn't look like they've been used. They are 9 degrees on a 4.4 bore center line. Let's just tidy this mess up and see what we've got. Terry, you're back. Yeah, David, what do you think of the heads? Uh, well, I do recognize these. I bet you found them in your, uh, might be good for future projects room, right? I wasn't thinking future project, I'm thinking now. Well, this is what the room was for, but anyway, here's my thoughts. I seem to remember Don gave me these before I had my brain surgery, right? Uh, does that sound about right to you? So. Yeah, I know it's been a while. Yeah, well look, um, uh, as I remember it, and I'm going to check with Don. Don did these uh, nine degree heads for Dart, and the one of them I've got here is one of the prototypes to check the machining. So it's a billet head. And the other one is a one of the first off the production line castings that's been machined to check everything. And as I remember it, I got this head because it was about five thousandths out of line on the port. And Don is such a stickler for getting things right on that he just said, hey, you may be able to cut this up and show people cross sections in your school or whatever. And I looked at it and I thought, you know what? With about ten minutes on each port, they're up to scratch. So, uh, you know, uh, what... What idea? What what have we got? We can use them for. Well, I've I've got a uh, nine two hundred dart block uh, Chevrolet. It's got a Super Crower one four one twenty five stroke. I uh, got it from a retired engine builder who worked his way up the ladder to F one. He offered a killer price, but when I told him you were going to be my partner in this thing, which you know now, um, he gave us a really good deal. So this will be a 468 cubic inch small block. Well, that's it right. Is. Um, um, okay, my my brain, my the gears in my brain are turning over at about oh, 9500 cup car RPM range. Right? <laughs> okay. Now, okay. Uh, uh, a thought here, right? And I know you, you won't have had time to come up with a plan yourself, and nor me, because you've only just introduced it. Right. But I've got a deal here that we may be able to make an 87 octane 14 to 1 
thousand horsepower normally aspirated small block now does that sound like you want to do that or do you just want to go with maybe uh, putting a turbo or a magnuson blower on it well i think a natural aspirated would probably be better uh, i'd be easier to maintain <clears throat> so right. well we can go either way yeah i'm inclined to go that way because well, what I've got here, we could go up to maybe as much as 17 to 1 compression. So we could build a slightly shorter cammed Pro Stalker. Now, as I remember it with these heads, and I'm going to call Don about this, right? They flowed like a veritable toilet. I mean, the intake valve on them is huge. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one by... A stock intake valve and so that the view, the video viewers can see the difference but I seem to remember that they flowed somewhere in the region of 400 CFM at 700 lift so let me just check this um, right and show the readers readers show the viewers the heads and I'll get back to you on it right but I've I, I don't think there's much to do to them. Well, with um, 400 CFM on a small block, that's uh, huge. Yeah, that crank and bottom end is good for at least 8,000 RPM. So we're okay sure. in that department. I mean, Crower, I, I've used about six or seven Crower cranks, and I beat the tar out of them, right, and their rods, and they just, uh, they just do well, it. it in 1983, I started running Pro Stock, and I used a Crower crank from then till I quit in 2003. And I tell you what, Crower makes some really good parts. Yeah, yep, yeah, they do. Yeah, I was good friends with Dave Crower, right? Anyway, yeah. let me let you go, Terry. I'll uh, clean these heads up and uh, take a look at them and give you a call back. All right, David, have a good day. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Cheers. Well, I gave Don at Ultra Pro a call. We discussed this for about an hour, and uh, I got all the lowdown on it. First off, let me say this is totally an Ultra Pro design, but uh, uh, the reason the other head has got um, a Dart on it is that Don's had a long working relationship with Dart, so when it came to make a casting to make these heads, he had Dart do it. Hence, it's got the dark name on. But if you want to get one of these, a pair of these heads, you have to go to Ultra Pro Machine. Just ask for Don. He's probably going to be the answer. They're not cheap. They just make an incredible amount of horsepower. Right? Don said, there's guys I can call who are making a thousand horsepower on, on uh, uh, engines of less than 400 cubes normally aspirated right it turns out that the flow figures on their site just might be ones that i've done can't remember it's pre-brain surgery right and don also warned me that the uh, uh other head maybe this one as well are slightly mismachined and when i clean them up i may not have the same airflow as there they've got on theirs but he should he said i should be close to it anyway uh what are we going to do with these heads well quite simply we are going to build a high compression engine over at 14 to 1 or more and uh, uh, we are going to take steps to be able to run it on 87 octane fuel and I'll tell you all about that in another edition. This is kind of a cliffhanger. Right, so let's take a quick look at the ports and see what we have here. Intake valve comparison, you'll see how big they are. In spite of the fact of only being 230 thousandths bigger, the area, of course, is uh, increases far more than just the percentage diameter increase. One thing that I might ought to tell you about is that uh, there is a Ford equivalent to this head, right? 
uh, similar flow. Now, Don's really into Fords, and one of the things he's done, and I'll show you a picture of that in the next edition, is make up a billet manifold that goes with this, right? And the power production capability of the manifold plus the cylinder head is pretty impressive. So go to their web website at ultrapro.com and just check it out. Let's take a look down the intake. As you can see, it's all big uh, radii. And uh, the um, interesting thing is, is there's no ski jump hump in these ports, right? That uh, seems to be not the way to go. Now let's take a look down the uh, exhaust throat. Believe it or not, this port flows almost 280 CFM. So it's a winner in that respect. Here's a view da down the intake port. As you can see, there's no uh, pushrod pinch point. Uh, these heads require a 350 offset uh, uh, lifter so that the uh, ports are not uh, uh, compromised by a pushrod bulge. In a likewise fashion, we'll look down the exhaust port and uh, Again, this flashlight should give you a better view of it. As you can see, it's um, pretty updrafted and you can see quite a bit of the uh, valve area down the port. That's a good move. As far as the chambers are concerned, what you see here is not quite the finished uh, deal. So, um, got a little bit of advice from Don on that, so we're good to go. So, with what appears to be very little work, Terry and I will have acquired a dynamite set of cylinder heads. At this point we have to ask ourselves, is a thousand horsepower even feasible? It should be. We've got a cylinder head here which <clears throat> has big block Chevy flow light capabilities on both the intake and exhaust. Yes, yeah, sure, the exhaust valve is smaller, but the port is super efficient. And we'll look at, at that when we analyze the molded form. We'll look at why it's so good. And uh, I'll give you a hint now. Pressure recovery. Now, the other end of the scale, we've got to look at what this is feeding. We've got 468 inches. Again, we're looking at something the size of a an average a big block Chevy. Sure, a thousand horsepower isn't going to fall off the tree on us, but w the equipment is here to do it. Whether we do it within the constraints of being able to run on pump gas is another thing. And I know there's a lot of you going to have a comment on this, uh, but we do have an ace up our sleeve here, so don't jump to conclusions. Anyway, this is about it for this edition. Uh, you need to follow along on here. Terry's working on the block now, so that's in progress. I'm going to start porting this, so by the time we do another uh, video on that, I will have some finished ports and some port molds to show what it looks like. Now, between now and then, I would like you to subscribe like, notify, and share. And on top of that, I need you to share a bit of your paycheck. Hit that thanks button. And remember, that money goes to St. Jude's. And like I've said before, those kids need that five or 10 bucks or whatever you're gonna spend more than you do. So please, Help my grief relief fund. Thank you for watching.